Cool. Page 94. Look into the scriptures. That's what we call it. It talks about on page 94. It says, Our growing relationship with God gave us the courage to examine ourselves, uh, to reveal our true selves, step back, acknowledge and disregards, and discard our old survival skills and move towards a new, healthier life. Being thorough and honest in completing our inventory places us in position to face facts and to move forward. These power passages gives us the uh, ability to move forward in a meaningful way to benefit and be rewarded as a result of moving forward. There's no future in the back, although we look it in the back and we examine the truthfulness of our behavior, but we're, we're about the business of moving forward. I want somebody to read, if you would, read that power passage right beneath uh, in the shaded area. Anybody can read it if you would, and uh, we'll, we'll start with that one. And we want to examine uh, that power passage right there in terms of moving forward. Who wants to read that? Which, thank you, brother. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James 4, chapter 7 through 8. And the practical application right beneath it, what does this say? Our personal inventory lets us acknowledge our past and turn with single-mindedness to the future. Okay. And you know what? And, and I like the way that they continue to mention that there is no future in the past. You find, but we do have a history. We want to know where we move. Where are we, where are we, what, what, what are we moving from? And where are we going to? Are you following what I'm saying? However... There's an important aspect of that in terms of resist the devil. What's that tell us? We're going to be tempted. It ain't like it's going to be smooth sailing and that you're not going to be challenged in terms of holding on and maintaining your sobriety. You're going to be tempted. But he says here, uh, with regard to being tempted, uh, he says the way that you overcome the temptation is that you have to stay in contact with a power greater than yourself. And of course, we call the power greater than ourselves is God. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But and we can we can actually overcome the temptation. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna hit you with this one real quick. It's in First Corinthians. If you ever get a chance, you can read that. I want to say First Corinthians around uh, uh, chapter ten, verse thirteen. He says. There hath no temptation, you got this, taking you but such as common to man. Are you there? But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with, 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 that the, tempta with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bury. Now the question of it is, you know, ain't nobody just put the drink in your hand. Okay. Oh. Are, are, you, are you following what I'm saying? Right, yeah. ain't, ain't nobody just put the drug in your hand. Now the idea came. Now I grant you that it came. But did you resist it? Or, or did you embrace it? And 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 so what we what we've done up Okay. Always good to have you for the support. And uh, but what we've done up to this particular point is that we know what the the, the thing that we have a one up on in terms of us being successful in terms of working this step is by thoroughly doing steps one through four. We know where the temptation is going to come from. It ain't catching us by surprise. If you've actually done your steps up to one, one through four, there is no, uh, it ain't going to catch you by surprise. Are you following what I'm saying? But the point of it is you have a choice and God has always given us a choice. From the creation, beginning of creation, he's always given us a choice. Are you following what I'm saying? He, he, of course he wants to use us in his plan for salvation and he loves us and he wants to deliver us. But we have to acknowledge that he is Lord and King over every situation. He's sovereign. There's no situation that catches him by surprise. And if you're close to him, there's no situation going to catch you by surprise because he's allowed you to, to, to examine our past through steps one through four. Are you following what I'm saying? Right. But we have to say yes and we have to say no. I like this this other part where it says, wash your hands, you sinners. I mean, uh, and purify your hearts. Man, he gets into your hand, your heart, and your mind. How are you going to put that drug in, 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 in you if you don't put it in your hand? Okay. Are you following what I'm saying? It ain't like somebody gonna just going to come up to you and put it. Are you following what I'm saying? And then he says, it's in your heart to want. How many guys know what I'm saying? It's in, it's in your heart to want to get high. Right. You know, we think about it, but if we think about it long enough, it's going to get it not only in our heart, but in our mind. Am I, right. am I on target or not? Right. It don't, we don't just, 
all of a sudden say, you know, I'm going to get high. We, man, I don't know. It's looking kind of iffy right now. You know, I, I don't know. It might just take the edge off for a little while. Next thing you know, it's the penetrated in your heart. And your, once it hook up with your heart and your mind, your hand is in it. Am I just talking or what? No, no. Come on with eight. I can get it out. And so the thing of it is, said, so as he says, he says, with every temptation, he'll make a way of escape. So now we got a choice. Are we in it or are we out of it? Are we going to head to the exit or are we going to get in the midst of this, this stuff and, and relapse? Are you following what I'm saying? Right. And so uh, he gives us that. And that's a, I think that's a very appropriate, a very good power passage, a way to view it. And then, okay, let's read the next one in terms of Step number five, uh, submit yourself. And then he talks about, let's look on page 95. He said, step five consists of three distinct parts. And he says, first we confess our thoughts to God, to ourselves, and to another human being. Three ways where we really get this thing, uh, 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 get, to get this thing down packed, where we, where we really become good in terms of working to step number five. It says, cleanse ourselves of excessive baggage that we've been carrying. And it says we'll open our hearts. We just talked about the heart and reveal ourselves and achieve a deeper level of spirituality. Self-disclosure is an important part of spiritual life. We created a life in our in community. We, we were uh, created to live in a community with both God and others. Now let's look down a little bit further. Somebody read that next one. Now right before it, it says our, self, our self-defeating behavior as well as our, as our shame have caused us to isolate from others. Now, we talked about that isolation. This is our coming out okay, step number five. O Lord, mm-hmm. o, Lord, o Lord, we acknowledge our wickedness and the guilt of our fathers. We have indeed sinned against you. Jeremiah 14, 20. Mm-hmm. By focusing on God, we, be, we become aware of our desire to move away from the evil and toward the good. Now, here, in other words, here's the thing. We need a target to shoot from. We need a target. You just don't, anybody ever, if, whether you do done uh, archery or a gun or whatever, you don't just close your eyes and shoot. You got to have a target. What you aiming for? Are you following what I'm saying? And we, so our aim is to focus on God. And, and so we can actually achieve this, 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 the benefits that are associated with uh, uh, step number five, moving away from what we've already uh uh, discovered in terms of our isolation and what have you. However, the bigger thing that I wanted to talk about is life ain't fair, but it's life. You know, a lot of this stuff that we've got, we've inherited from our parents. Are you following what I'm saying? They've influenced, they've influenced us uh, and impacted us tremendously, whether we want to recognize it or not. And sometimes what we call about is generational curses. We have a, a, a we, we have a tendency or we inclined to use drugs if our parents use drugs. Or if our parents was angry, we have a tendency to, to have two sides of us where we kind of angry some of the time. Are you following what I'm saying? And so when he says he is, I like the way that, that he talks about this. This thing is it's bigger than just you and me. It's some stuff that we carry because our fathers didn't do nothing about it. It's incumbent, up, it's required that we do something. We break that cycle of, of, of addictive compulsive behavior. Are you? It may not be fair. And you may be angry about or, 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 or angry about some of the stuff that's been, been handed down to you. You didn't ask for this. Are you following what I'm saying? But some kind of way we've gotten caught up in it and we've embraced it. Are you following what I'm saying? So here's what he says. Check this out. Let's look at that, let's look at that power passage that's going to put wheels on our, on our step and, and so we can roll out. It says, oh, Lord, we acknowledge our weaknesses. But I like this in terms of... Uh, Admitted to God to ourselves another enemy. There's another side of this. Our weaknesses and the guilt of what? All right. How many people in here can actually say that you you know some stuff that 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 you know you feel like some stuff been unfairly dumped on you to to some extent? Mm-hmm. So it ain't saying that other people ain't clean. I mean that that they didn't that they didn't play a role in terms of us uh, in terms of us. Uh, in, engaging in some of these behaviors. Are you following what I'm saying? So we also got to admit, you know, we, we also admit some stuff that our parents did. But we accept the things we cannot change and encourage, and encourage to change them. We can't, we can't change them. But we certainly, it has certainly come time that we do something about our behavior. Are you following what I'm saying? And we have, a, uh, we have again sinned against who? God. Now, let's go down a little bit further. He talks about, we may choose to believe that God caused, oh man, Choose to believe that because God is in charge of the universe, all events are His will. And in blaming God, 
uh, can be a method of us to uh, for us to deny our part in the problem. And now we get into the blaming aspect. Remember, we talked about that in terms of step number four. Mm -hmm. We want to shift the blame. And of course, we we acknowledge that our parents may have had something to do with it, but we want to get away from the blame game. Because it is a game and it continues on and on. And we quit to say that. I don't know how many people have said that. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> or if you would have been a better person, you follow what I'm saying? We yeah. want to do that. But we want to get away from that blame thing. Because right. we, we'll even get to the point where what was God then? You follow okay. So our focus is, is on God giving us power to be able to yeah. carry this step out. Let's go down a little bit, a little bit further. And he talks about, which is what I said before, free choices. God gives us free will and choices uh, that we make. And other people may have been involved, but we made the choice to actually engage in, in those type of uh, addictive uh, 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 behaviors. And so uh, let's move on to, to it says he will strengthen and guide us as we prepare his as we pursue his desire for us to lead us to uh, for us to lead a healthy and peaceful life. And you know what? Here's the thing: is no matter how insignificant or how useless you are, you, you may feel at any particular time. God loves you and he wants to use you in his plan of deliverance. Are you following? No matter, when you feel unloved, trust this, God does love you. No matter how sinful or separated you are from God, uh, God has a salvation or a deliverance plan to, say, to deliver you from whatever it is uh, that you uh, may feel like uh, has uh, uh, causing, you to, causing you to feel you know, depressed or whatever the issue may be. Are you following what I'm saying? He has a plan to relieve like you from. Yeah, man, like God. You're not worthy of what you get. Come on now. Okay. He has a plan for you. Okay. And that's a lie from the devil to tell you that you're useless and that you are insignificant and, and, and God doesn't want anything to do with you. That's not the truth. Let's look at page 96. Especially in terms of admitting to, our, to God to ourselves and other human beings, exact nature I'm wrong. So then, I'll read that. Okay, in terms of the belief, uh, blaming other people that we talked about, in terms of our, our parents that we talked about, in terms of uh, you sinners and, and our hands and our hearts. Now, we've talked about all that. Now, so then, each of us will give an account of, man, he's getting good here. Of who? Of your parents? Of somebody else? Of what? Of himself mm -hmm. to God. And here's the practical application. What does that mean? Admitting our wrongs to God initiates the restoration of our personal integrity by removing the mask, behind, the mask behind which we have hidden. And so now we, we actually, by admitting and being honest and open with him and being truthful, we're actually restored. We have new value. We, we have a brand new foundation that we're starting to build. A relationship, actually we enter into a friendship with God. Are you following what I'm saying? We've been redeemed. We have value. You follow what I'm saying? We've been restored. We've been renewed. We, step number five, when it says emerging, coming out, we're actually stepping out. There's a new you. Now we go down a little bit further. And it talks about step five is for your own benefit. God already knows you. You are beginning, you are beginning a process of living a life of humility, honesty, and courage. And I want to share, and it says the result of free, the result is freedom, happiness, and serenity. Those are some good benefits. And I tell you, why, why do you think that they use this word humility? Why is humility so important? And I'm going to hit you with a couple of them. Real, if ever you get a chance, you can look at what we call uh, the Book of Wisdom. And that book itself is Proverbs, right? Right. Yeah. And if we go to Proverbs, one of the first things he talks about, about in terms of humility is, uh, I believe, it's early in the book, um, on page, uh, in terms of pride. We go to uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, and I'll get to the big one. Of course, we all know that one. And we probably know this one. It says, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, which happens that, we, we, you know, which is, which is the direction we move in, we move in, and the evil way, that is the progression of evil, pride and arrogancy, and the forward or evil speech, he says, do I hate? In other words, if, once pride takes over, you can actually, your, your conversation is going to become foul. You're going to become arrogant, think you're above it. the law of doing what's necessary. Are you following what I'm saying? These are some of the, uh, this is the progression that, that uh, pro and you you just become hateful and evil. Are you following, you ever heard anybody say you just so hateful? Mm -hmm. and, and so, of oh, course, we go, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo. 
Yep. And of course, we want to go to this one. As uh, th there's another one that uh, I think is 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 really good. And I believe it was in terms of pride that I'd like to share with you. That uh, all of us know this one. I, I believe or we've heard it several times. Hey, here it is. Uh, chapter 16 of Proverbs, verse 18, in terms of pride. Pride goeth before what? Destruction. And a haughty spirit before fall. So, you you know, when you start, stop listening to people and you want it your way and you can care less about what other people's opinion is, just a matter. You probably, you've been here a while. You've you probably seen people stop going to meetings, yeah. don't want to go to meetings, don't want to listen to nobody. And before long, what happened? Back out, back out there. <laughs> they got all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've been here a while, so I know you've just seen it. Mm -hmm. and, and as I said, pride goes before the fall. You can't tell them that. Man, you want to go to me? Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't need no me. Huh? Yeah, I don't need no me. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, he says before the fall, and I'm not wishing it on nobody, but these are some some uh, indicators mm -hmm. of what's going to happen. These are some signs. You, you follow what I'm saying? So we move on a little bit further. Uh, that pride issue is a big one. Let's go on to page 97. And he talks about denial, using denial as a coping mechanism. And we talked about that in terms of four, step number four. And he says, protecting us from facing the truth about ourselves, denial is not easily conquered. It says, the barrier of denial is, uh, it says in terms of step four, doing that inventory, the barrier of denial is already weakened. Who wants to read that? If we claim to be what? 